when the storm struck, this was ground zero. I'm standing in front of the south steps of the state capitol. There it sits out there, the small yellow plane that crashed at about 4.15 this afternoon. But in their never-ending quest for more money, you realize these officers aren't just putting away Robert. This latest report is misleading. Still, the only way to get to some of these houses is by boat. All the Okies back home. We love you guys and miss you all. Meteorologist Jim Giles here. We have some new tornado warnings. This is the tornadic storm that we're dealing with. The tornado has been sighted six miles west. Of and I uh, switched over to Channel 6, and Channel 6 said there was a tornado on the ground. I'm not going to have to eat for a couple days. That was absolutely great. You really need to feel right at home. It has been a marvelous day. Did you get a little rain around here last night? Huh? Just a little bit. About three inches of rain. At least the really heavy wind stayed to the south of you, and that was great news. Uh, special people to thank right now. I want to thank our sponsors, Oklahoma Natural Gas and Maze Drugstores. They have made this possible. How about a big hand for ONG and Maze? Thanks. A few folks right here in Okmulgee, we could not have put on this show without their help. Nolan Crowley in the Oklahoma, or the Okmulgee Chamber of Commerce, thank you very much for your help. <laughs> Okmulgee Main Street was a big help as well. Dwight Wilson and Okmulgee High School, thank you for all of your help and also the volunteer help to decorate. I want to also special thanks to Fire Chief Jerry Ballard and his department. Thank you for your time as well. Big hand for all of our supporters. And of course, to all of you, thank you for being here. We've had a great day today. I tell you, this is a wonderful program. I'm so proud of it. There are sights and sounds in this program, my friends, you're never, ever going to forget. At this time, I want you to sit back, hang on to your seats.
job. devastating tornado hit south and east of Wichita, Kansas back in April of 91. By the way, the same day that Uliga, Skyatook, and the Lake Keystone area got clobbered. This tornado, 250 mile per hour winds, it traveled on the ground for about 50 miles and was on the ground for more than an hour. 17 folks lost their lives in this tornado. Mobile Home Park in Andover was literally obliterated. Now here's some good news. Only 2% of all tornadoes ever get this strong. And the important thing for you to remember, and the one thing I want you to take home tonight, is that with preparation, you can survive the storm, even a storm like this. And I think that is good news, and that's why we're here tonight. Here's a sidebar, little local lingo, you know, legal lingo that they've been, a sidebar on this thing. The airman that shot the video as the tornado crossed the military base actually got court-martialed. You see, the commanding general said, take cover. The airman wanted to shoot some video. Endangering valuable government property was the charge. Actually, court-martial for shooting that video. Now, there's a message here for you, and that is, when I say tornado, my friends, I want you to take cover. I don't want you to worry about shooting video of a tornado. Now, as that tornado that we've just seen dissipated, Another tornado formed and chased a Kansas TV news crew down the highway. Believe me, they had to run for their lives. It just passed right on top of us. People very upset. People underneath the girders of this overpass. They're still hanging on, hanging on for their lives. It was a tremendous rush. Flying debris everywhere. 
Some people look to me like they, they're all right, but they have scratches and bruises. Here comes another one. Here we go. Hang on, Ted. I got you. Hang on. You're all right. Don't put your hand over my mouth. It's okay. It's over. You know, you might have missed something here, so we're going to go back. I want you to watch in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. You see that? That's a minivan being blown around by those tornadic winds of about 125 miles per hour. We're going to zoom in there so you can get a better view. See that car being blown around? It's like a feather. Man inside, seriously injured, but survived. This wreckage is the result of the 200-mile-per-hour tornado hit Catoosa back in 93. Moral of the story, don't ever try to outrun a tornado in your car. Get out of your car and take cover immediately. Now, I want you to think about this. What is the difference between you driving down the highway at 125 miles per hour, losing control of your car and going end over appetite, or sitting beside the highway and having a tornado pick your car up and blowing it down the highway at 125 miles per hour? You see, the results the same. Your chance of survival is just near zero. When it comes to a tornado and you're in your car, I want you to get out of your car and take cover immediately. I want you to go inside to a permanent structure. That's your number one choice. Number two choice, if a permanent structure is not available, get into a ditch or culvert. And if you should be so lucky as those folks you just saw, get up underneath the girders of a big overpass. But you'd have to be really lucky in order for that to work out. Now, if you think that jumping into a ditch or a culvert with the real muddy, you know, and all the snakes and spiders is a bad idea. Well, think about this. The tornado's breathing down your neck. I'm telling you that the tornado shelter is going to seem like a dream home. You're going to take cover and think nothing about it. Now, I'm hearing, you hear that? You know what it is? It's a chopper, and it's coming into the back of your building right now. This is our news crew coming in from Tulsa. We're going to watch them land. They'll be entering that door right over here. Let's watch them come in and be ready to give them a big welcome when they come in the door. Landing in the parking lot right outside. There they are. There's Clayton, Beth. Something else there. And you know John Walls, there's only one of him around. Get ready now, they're walking through the door. How about a big hand? Knock them off their feet. indeed at KOTV. We have a wonderful crew, and these are three of the best. I'm so proud to be working with them. They're going to be back out now in just a few minutes. They're going to be chatting with you, and at the end of the program, we'll line up down here. I want you to all come down. We'll chat for a moment. We'll sign autographs. So we're all done until the last person walks back. Talking about helicopters, I have some more video to show you. I want you to take a look at this. I'm going to have to leave this area here. The debris is drifting my way. This is really spectacular. Another touchdown, another touchdown. Man, isn't that something? This spectacular tornado was shot back in 86 up near Minneapolis, and believe it or not, it was broadcast live on television all over Minnesota. Now the flashes that you see, look carefully, the flashes that you see once in a while, right there, this will resolve to be the power lines crossing or the transformers blowing up. I can tell you of the night, sometimes that flash is the only thing, or the roar is the only thing that tells you that there's a tornado in the area. Unbelievable sights. I think we've brought together some of the best video that you can find anywhere. And the crew of that helicopter, just like the Kansas TV news crew, they knew better than to mess around in the close proximity of a tornado. 
My advice to you, don't do that. Stay away. When we talk about tornadoes, we want you to take cover. That's the thing to do. You know, I'm often asked, Jim, what do you really do for a living? Come on, 10 minutes on the air a day, you can't call that a job. That, that can't be all there is. And of course, they're right. There's a lot more to the job that you never get a chance to see. I can tell you that my time on the air is the most relaxed part of my day. I get a load down this. I'm sitting behind the weather set there, my feet up on the set, and I'm doing the same thing you are. I'm watching the news and I'm watching the sports. You know, there is someone, though, that makes my life a whole lot easier. I'm talking about Dick Perot. When I'm not on the job, I now have Dick Perot to keep you covered. I want to introduce you to my sidekick, my friend, Dick Perot. Dick. Thanks, Jim. Here at KOTV's Weather Center, we have the latest in weather technology right at our fingertips. Jim and I, along with our weather team, gather information from computers, radar, and satellites. This equipment not only shows us what's happening with the weather right now, it also gives us a good idea about what's likely to happen in the future. Still, some people like to do things a little differently. Our own Rick Wells explains. You know, there's plenty of fiction and fable associated with tornadoes, things they won't do, places they won't go. Sort of like wearing garlic around your neck to keep the vampires away. Well, most of the movies I've seen, it didn't work. Vampires, of course, are not real, but tornadoes are. And like garlic around the neck, there are many myths and misconceptions about keeping tornadoes away. We hear them all the time. I've selected four that we hear most often. Myth, myth, myth number, number one. 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 <laughs> I've always heard that areas around rivers and lakes where there's good fishing, well, they're tornado-free too, right? <coughs> huh? Not true. In 1984, a big tornado caused considerable damage in Manford, which is on the south side of Lake Keystone. Then it traveled across the lake and slammed into New Peru, wrecking about a third of the homes there. Myth, 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 myth number, number two. 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 Uh, watch out when a tornado goes over your house, cause the low pressure around the front will cause a building to just explode, right? Huh? Although it does seem logical that a structure would simply burst if the pressure outside suddenly dropped with the pressure inside trying to get out, it was just pop, like a balloon. Well, it doesn't happen. Research tells us that it's the violent winds and the flying debris slamming into the buildings that causes the damage. Myth, myth, myth. Number, Number three. Three, 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 three. Hey, how about uh, Wilma Wonders? Equalize the pressure, minimize the damage. Always heard that work. How about that? <coughs> yep, I've always heard that too. But it's just not necessary, or even a good idea. First of all, the building's not going to explode. Opening the windows won't help. And while you're running around trying to get all the windows open, you could be taking cover, protecting yourself. So protect yourself first. Remember that. Myth, myth, myth. Number four. four, four, four. Hey, kids, here's a tip for you. Always buy your house on the northeast side of the hill. That way, you keep the hill between you and the tornado, and you're safe. <coughs> eh? An old story, but really not true. See, in June of 1966, a huge tornado rolled through Topeka, Kansas. Folks there had always believed that they were protected because of Burnett's Mound, south and west of town. Well, not only did the mound not protect them, 16 people were killed, and it was the first tornado in history to produce more than $100 million in damage. Hmm, so much for Burnett's Mound, so much for keeping the tornadoes away. Best thing to do is protect yourself. Know where the safe shelter is and get to it. Thanks, Rick. Maybe that'll help to clear up a few misconceptions. Here at KOTV, though, we use our experience and the most advanced weather technology available to forecast the weather. But when the weather gets severe, it really gets crazy around here. I think we need to go, guys. We got tornado warning. With the help of Pathfinder, Doppler 6, Nexrad 6, Street Spotter 6, Striker 6, Sooner 6 warnings, and Quick 6 action video, we give you the information you need to know when you need to know it. We're proud of the investment KOTV is making in time, people, and technology. And we do it to keep you and your family safe. How about a big hand for Dick Perot? Good guy, Rick Wells. Yeah. 
I'm certainly proud to have Dick Perot working with me. And I want to tell you, don't underestimate Rick Wells. The man is a good weatherman. Believe me, he really knows what he's talking about. He is a character, though. I must have the best job on earth. I'm sitting between Rick Wells and John Walls. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine working between those two all day long? Wow. How do I get anything done? You know, a couple years ago, there was a big storm brewing up over the Lake Keystone area. It looked like it was headed towards Skyatook. It started to spin, curved to the right, and headed into Tulsa. And as fate would have it, it moved directly over our studios in downtown Tulsa. My sidekick and also my weather producer, Tom Bennett, he's here tonight. He was helping decorate and everything. Tom is always there. He was there last night along with Dick. Tom decided he'd run out and take a look, so he dashed outside to see the storm passing over the studio. It was moments later, Tom came running back in. I'm not kidding you, his eyes were about the size of saucers. And, and Tom was trying to tell me something. It was something like, go, go, go. I didn't know whether he wanted me to go out and look or whether he wanted to be excused to go to the bathroom at that point. But I decided I would go out for a look. And moments later, I came running back in. My eyes were as big as Tom's. My tie was up over my shoulder. My hair was all messed up. I grabbed the microphone, and I told you that a tornado could drop out of the storm at any moment, and it did. The tornado fell to the ground. Thanks to Pathfinder, I was able to tell Katusa they had six minutes to take cover. That was quite a night. I actually cracked a tooth that night, gritting my teeth, trying to get through the storm. The gentleman I'm about to introduce to you was there that night. He helped us get through that night, through the storm, and the next day as well. This guy has been with me on many, many stormy nights. He's simply the best. He's the, he's the dean of Oklahoma broadcasters. Let me introduce to you my friend, Clayton Vaughn. Clayton? I want to tell you three things about Jim Giles. Number one, the man can dance. <laughs> Number two, more than anyone I know, he loves life. And I'll prove number one to you in just a few minutes, and I'll tell you why number two is true in just a few minutes. And the third thing I want to tell you is that after having done television in Oklahoma for more than 30 years and worked with and seen every meteorologist who's ever worked here, the Jim Giles is the absolute best. Here are some reasons why. Jim received his first university degree from Ball State in Indiana, Bachelor of Science in Physics, Chemistry, Biology, and Math. His military career started in the Ball State Air Force ROTC program. He holds a master's in meteorology from the University of Oklahoma, where he worked on a tornado prediction project with the National Severe Storms Laboratory. He would go on later to be a teacher in San Antonio's public school system and at the University of Texas and St. Mary's University. The interruption was Vietnam and the need for accurate weather predictions for American Air Force pilots. Jim commanded the Nha Trang Weather Station in Vietnam and on his return stateside, spent three years at the Air Force post at the Kansas City Weather Warning Center. We need to stop the tape there because there aren't any pictures for what I'm about to tell you. Shortly after that last picture was taken, when Jim had been transferred back to the States, he was diagnosed with cancer. It was abdominal cancer, and an examination showed that, despite the fact that he had never smoked, still doesn't, it had spread to his lungs. He was still in the Air Force, and they sent him to a military hospital in Texas and placed him in a cancer ward with other cancer patients who were, frankly, considered terminal. And after he was there, and the doctors had fully examined him, he underwent a major operation in order to try to get at the cancer surgically. 
And then when he had rested and recuperated and gathered enough strength, he underwent a second major operation in the same areas. And then he began weeks and long months of chemotherapy and radiation. And all the rest of the people in that cancer ward died. No one who ever had any kind of condition that remotely was as bad as Jim's ever made it out of that hospital alive. But Jim walked out eventually under his own power and in good health. And he learned a lesson from that experience about life. And it shows up every day in the quickness of his step and the warmth of his greeting and the love that he has for his family and his friends and the dedication that he brings to his job at KOTV to try to protect the lives and property of people in northeastern Oklahoma. And that is that that experience taught him a lesson that we can all learn. And that is that every day he wakes up, he realizes that that day is a gift. Jim is so healthy now that he hosted wild, wild weather shows like tonight's last year in Collinsville, Coweta, Fort Gibson, and Coffeyville, Kansas. He also rode in four parades, did six Green Country Neighbor newscasts, visited 35 schools for weather talks, and spoke to 22 other groups. He did five community-wide weather seminars, 39 live remote weather programs, spent seven days out at the Tulsa State Fair, and he was captain of the KOTV Oktoberfest beer barrel race, beating all comers and claiming the International Oktoberfest Beer Barrel Racing Championship. And getting back to his love of life, you must also meet the love of his life, his German-born wife, Hannah who makes the Giles house a home for family reunions of two blonde-haired, blue-eyed daughters and two granddaughters. And don't forget the two dogs, one cat, one parrot, and a sort of tropical fish. And, best of all, he can dance. Told you the man could dance. Jim Giles, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Straighten by a big hand. He is the best. Here's something else. My wife is sitting down front. At times I wonder what it would be like to do a poker with these 50,000 watt speakers, you know. I think I could really get into that. You know, there are video cameras everywhere these days, have you noticed? It seems like everyone has one. It also seems like everyone wants to capture a tornado on video. Now, I can't recommend that. It's far too dangerous. When I say tornado warning, I want you to take cover, not shoot video. Now, if you insist on shooting video, some of you are going to do it no matter what I say. Do so only in the sun. And you say, wait a minute, are, are you pulling my leg? No, I'm not. You see, if you shoot the tornado, in the sun, you'll be southwest of the storm, the tornado will be northeast of you, moving away, and you'll be in the clear, other than other storms have the habit of forming to the south and west, so do keep an eye on your back. The last thing is never, ever, ever storm chase after dark. It's too dangerous, even the professionals do, don't do that. Now, by the way, if you get a good tornado shot, you know where I'm at, right? Now, I can't say that, I can't say that. Just don't shoot any tornado videos. Now, if you want more proof of just how dangerous it is to shoot home videos of tornadoes, get a load of this video. Oh, 
hope she's in her basement. It's gonna take all them houses. Oh, I hope she's in her basement. Get away from the windows! Get away! 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 Where's everybody? Where's it? Where's everybody? I got Watch you. It's gonna get that house right there. Yes, baby. it is. There it is. There went the barn. Look at that. Oh my God! Look. Right there, look I'm kidding. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, but see how it's so calm. Just sit. Come on up now. Todd, mighty y'all. You taking that? Yeah. Come on, please don't. Y'all scare me. No. I'm gonna get that sprinkler right there. Wait on that right now. Let me slip up first. Sorry, Corey. We're about to tell something. Let me step outside for a minute. Look, there's two more over here. That door is. Golly. There it is. Here's the tornado. Oh, boy. Yeah, look at the stuff up in there. Yep. Swirling around up in there. It's getting bigger. Please don't come here. Oh, holy cow. Holy cow. Ah, what a video, huh? When I say tornado, I want you to take cover. I want to tell you now the following. I want you to move inside. I want you to move to the lowest floor of the house. I want to have you move to the middle of the house in a small room like a bathroom or closet. And I want you to cover up. And I want you to always remember that you can survive the storm if you're prepared. So listen carefully. That's why we're talking about these things tonight. Tornadoes are dangerous. Everyone knows that. You don't need me to tell you that. But did you know that lightning kills more Americans every year than tornadoes? Lightning kills more Americans every year than hurricanes. As a matter of fact, more than tornadoes. Kind of a familiar sight around here, isn't it? Interesting fact. Did you know the bolt of lightning is only about the size of your little finger? The fact is, though, it's also five times hotter than the sun. Well, that puts it up around 50,000 degrees. It's easy to avoid injury due to lightning. You simply stay inside. You get into a car or into a truck, as long as it's not a convertible, and always remember to roll up the windows. A reminder, it's not a good idea in one of these lightning storms around here to wash dishes, to take a bath or a shower, or talk on a, on a phone, except, of course, the cordless phones, they're fine. I bet you we have some coaches in the audience tonight. Little reminder for the coaches, and then for all of you. Always remember, don't wait until it starts to rain to clear the field or to go inside, because what you may not know is that the most likely spot for cloud to gram lightning is at the leading edge of the rain. So don't wait until it starts to rain in order to clear the field or go inside. Some other curious things. Did you know that far more men are struck by lightning every year than women? Yeah, yeah. Now let's see if we can't sort out the reason why. How about this? How many of you think maybe it's because men are a little taller than women? Maybe they're closer to the bottom of the cloud. I don't think I'm selling that one. I don't think I'm selling that one. How about men are more likely to have a big bag of metal clubs on their back running around in a thunderstorm? That's plausible, right? That's a maybe. That's a maybe. How about this? Might it be that women are just simply smart enough to get in out of the rain? Okay. I think I got the audience pretty well sized up that time, you know, male versus uh, female. If you insist on going golfing, by the way, in a thunderstorm, remember the following. Don't ever, ever go golfing in a thunderstorm with a ball-headed man. Yeah. Wait a minute. 
You're pulling my leg again. You're kidding me, but I'm not. I'm really not. You see, lightning is about to strike. Your hair stands on end. Now, the bald-headed guy stands there. He starts laughing, but then he hits the ground. And you get fried. So I tell you, don't ever, ever go golfing with a bald-headed man unless he first tells you why he's laughing before he hits the ground. Uh, those are just the basic rules of things. There's a guy at Channel 6. I would go golfing with any time, rain or shine. Now, let me think about this. If we had a thunderstorm, I probably would ask him to carry the golf bag, if you know what I mean. This guy is special. He's the best darn sportscaster I've ever seen anywhere, bar none. I'm talking about none other than John Walls. Come on out, big John. Tell you what, I really like Okamogi. I really do. I like it down here. I want to say first off, I beg. Yeah, go ahead. Let's hear it over there, huh? All right. You know, they kid me back at work. I am not. You know, baking is not beneath me at all. And I want to thank the folks at OSU Tech over there for those great pecan pies. They're just fantastic. And I beg all week for those. So thank you very much for that. It is a pleasure, though, to be down here with all of you and uh, to be a part of, of Jim's Wild Weather Show. Um, you know, I often, I give Jim a hard time. He and I sit back in the corner together there and we kind of laugh at all the madness that's going on inside. And I give him a hard time about the weather when things turn bad. He's always interrupting the golf tournaments and George Foreman and what have you. But I promise you that uh, this weekend, a great example of how I, would, I wouldn't want anyone else in charge of telling me when there's bad weather, and I mean bad weather out there, than Jim Giles and Dick Perot. They do a super job, and I'm very appreciative of that, and I hope you are too. They do a great job. We like to have a little fun back in our corner. We have a little fun on the uh, evening news as well. We call it Off the Walls, and thought we'd just take a look at some of the best of tonight. This Carl Malone of the Utah Jazz, but how about their mascot bringing it down here? And a great finish. This is Turbo Man in Houston. He's front page news down there. Can you imagine this? And in Charlotte, Grandma's old, but she can still get up and get down. And the Phoenix Gorilla just dropping in on the sun. All right, Coach Kondik, this is for you. A little football here. Of course, you get into the end zone, and there's one more obstacle you got to get over. And then occasionally somebody gets in your way before you get to the end zone. So what do you do? Happy landing here. Very nice. This is a play for the Bulldogs, all right? Extra point goes awry. You start throwing the thing around. You play a little hot potato. No, you take it over here, all right? There's somebody else. There are you. I'm tired. One more time. And two points, just like they put it up on the drawing board, right? Chris Morris, the New Jersey Nets, with a shattering experience there. But how about Isaiah Ryder of the Minnesota Timberwolves? Trying to save it? Are you kidding me? And this is one with a little Oklahoma case. John Stark, Tulsa Zone, showing us that basketball is just not that hard at all. And then in Major League Baseball, Jose Canseco showing us how to use his head in right field. And again, those lovable Texas Rangers proving it's always better to have two gloves than one. And how about this minor league umpire explaining to the umpires or minor league managers the bare facts of the last play. And this is my all-time favorite. This one isn't off the wall, this is through the wall. One more time for good measure here. Boy, if 
that's not a lousy way to get your day started. I don't know what is. Thank you all very much for having us, and thanks for coming out tonight. John Wall, he is something else, and he? he is simply the best. I said it before, I've said it again. I'm proud of the folks at KOTV Channel 6. We have some good people there. I bet you he saw the pecan pie that's left back there, too, knowing John. <laughs> you know, after the Manford tornado back in 1984, I was visiting with a young lady that had survived that tornado thanks to her knowledge of tornadoes and tornado safety. She'd been babysitting two youngsters that day, and she says, Jim, we were playing out in the front yard. We looked down the street, and we saw the tornado just a few blocks away. She said, the strangest thing, though, it didn't look like it was moving. It just looked like it was getting bigger. So I was telling her what was happening was the tornado was coming straight towards her. That's what happens when the tornado is moving towards you. It just gets bigger. It doesn't look like it's moving. Would you know what to do if a tornado was headed your way? Would you know what to do? Let me urge you, let me urge you tonight, please, when you go home, how about putting, putting together a tornado plan of action tonight, before tomorrow, let's do it tonight. I think it's about time that we talked about tornadoes, how they form, and what to look for. I have some great video here for you. This is a rotating thunderstorm. You can see that. It's in time lapse, so it's moving a little bit faster than it would normally. Notice the rotation. Rain is to the right. Notice there's no rain to the left right at the edge of the storm. It's the rotating storm that's gonna produce the wind damage, most generally the extremely large hail, and always the tornado. Here's another rotating storm, you can see it by the shape. Look on the lower left-hand corner of the screen, that's the southwest corner of the storm. There's a wall cloud. That's the tornadic rotation in the storm that's being seen below the cloud base, and looky there, a tornado dropped from that wall cloud. Had you noticed no rain around those circulations? Here's another circulation. This is the wall cloud over by Broken Arrow a few years ago. You can see it rotate. It's just as clear as can be. Rotation gets stronger, closer to the ground. You can see it's lowering, and it's continuing to organize. No rain around this rotation. Rain is to the north and east. Long about dark, the organization finally was sufficient to cause a tornado. You can see it there in that flash of light. That's another way at night you can see that activity. Here's another wall cloud. This is up towards Collinsville a couple years ago. There's the wall cloud. See the funnel dropping from the wall cloud? You see the tornadic rotation moves from the cloud down. Finally, it reaches the ground as a tornado. No rain around them. No rain around this tornado. Kind of typical, broad, kind of cone-shaped. Here's another tornado. It's more narrow, and it's white. The other one was dark. That's just where you are relative to the tornado and the sun. Look at this rascal. This is the most interesting tornado I've ever seen. I call it the Jack and the Beanstalk tornado. Up and up and up it goes, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40,000 feet. I just Texas back in 1989. I've never seen anything like that. This is the only video I know of anything even close to that. That's a great video. I'd like to introduce another member of our team. She is a sweet young lady. I've worked with her for years and years. She's a great anchor. She's just as nice as you've always thought she is. And if you've wondered how good looking she is, I'm about to introduce her. You can judge for yourself. Let me introduce my friend, Beth Ringo. Come on out, Beth. Thank you so much. What? <laughs> we love you too, I tell you what. You know, I was home last night, and now that I'm home at night, I get to flip and watch all the TV stations, and I am so proud of Jim Giles and Dick Perot. They nailed the storm. They knew exactly where it was going, right where it was heading. I was so proud of all of you. That's, that's the team. And it just made me so sure of, of why, we're, why we come here, why we're doing these shows, because we love you, we love you as, as viewers and fans, and we want to just make sure you're safe, because prevention is education. 
when the tornado hit my parents' hometown in Wichita Falls, Texas in 1980, I was working in Tulsa at another TV station. And I remember when the uh, weatherman came and said, my goodness, Beth, it hit. I went home, I tried to call, there was no power, no way I could, could find out what had happened, so I had to drive at 10.30 at night. It took me six hours to drive through this horrible storm to see my parents. Well, they were alive and okay, but you know what they did? This is one thing you're never supposed to do when a storm is approaching. Dad was watching TV, it was six o'clock, and in, within 30 seconds, the TV set was knocked off the air and he ran outside to see what was going on, looked up and saw this storm, the tornado, heading right towards them. And he said, Mama, come on, let's go see what it is. First rule, never do that. They got in the car and realized that they can't outrun one of these monsters heading your way. So they thought, my goodness, I think we'll, we'll hide. So they found this big culvert. Now I envision this, mother in her hair rollers, in a duster, house shoes, and, and Dad r finding this culvert, getting her out of the car, saying, get on and crawl in there, and, and they're all, they're both on their all fours, and he's pushing her into this culvert. Hurry up, Mama, while this big storm is heading. Well, they're safe, and, and as I t told them the next morning, I scolded them both and said, these are the things you never want to do. So I put together a quick little package of, of things to do when you, when you know that the storm is approaching and Jim is saying, take cover, here are some steps to take. First of all, you must stay calm. Keeping yourself under control will only help others around you. Immediately look for shelter. A basement is a good place to start. If there's not one in your home or place of business, go to a ground floor. Never choose an upstairs location for safety. Go to an interior room. If there isn't one, choose a room on the north and east side of the building. Stay near the innermost walls because tornadoes usually travel from southwest to northeast. A small closet or bathroom usually is safe. Small rooms are less susceptible to collapse. Cover yourself with a blanket or coat. Always wear shoes to avoid broken glass. And stay tuned to Channel 6 for weather updates. It's a good idea to keep a portable TV or radio on hand. Also, we've got some of these folders and uh, magnets you can put on your refrigerator with some, some tips that we can give to you after the show and hope that we get to meet every one of you and shake your hand and, and get to talk to you. This is our last show of the season, and before we... we you know, say goodbye. I want to personally thank all of the KOTV staff that have put this show together. We get to reap all the benefits and, and do all the, the handshaking and smiling, but it's the people behind the scenes, Wendy Burkeen, Joel Sega, and all the camera people. So we love you and thank you for all your hard work that makes our job so much easier. So I'm going to say goodbye now and just be sure and stay tuned to the best guy in town, this one right here, and we hope to see you right after, sh after the show. Thank you, Okmogi. We love you. Thanks. How about a big hand for Beth Ringo? She's simply the best. John Walls, Clayton, we've got a great crew. Beth gave you some good advice there. I'm sure you were listening very carefully. Something interesting about the Giles household. Have you ever thought about this? Daddy is never there when there's a tornado warning. Daddy is never there when there are storms. He's always obviously down at the studio. In our house, our safe spot is on the lowest floor in the middle of the house under a staircase. It's a little closet there. My wife, Hannah, Herds, the kids, now the grandkids, the dogs, the cat, the parrot. You saw all of them on Clayton's video. She herds them all into that little closet. It's a zoo, you know, things going on around there, getting them all in there. If you have some youngsters, how about taking a tip from Hannah? How about putting a bag of chocolate chip cookies in your safe spot? It will make the night seem a lot shorter. Guess what the old weatherman does when he first gets home, three in the morning or so like last night? He goes and gets those chocolate chip cookies because he knows where they're at. 
Cookies go pretty fast around our place. There are a couple folks that couldn't be here tonight. They had to stay back home and take care of business, but they were very anxious to say hi to you. I'm talking about none other than Paul Sorrell and Glenda Selvey. How about a big hand for them? <laughs> Hello, gang. Hi, Jim. Congratulations on another successful Wild Wild Weather show. Wish we could be there with you tonight, but we're back here preparing for the 10 o'clock news. We hope you're having a great time and that you're learning a lot. Now, Aunt Glenda and I have some <laughs> wonderful stories prepared for you on tonight's 10 o'clock news, but perhaps the one most important to you is where you get to see yourself on TV. So we hope you'll tune us in tonight at 10. And now... Back to you, Jim! Thanks, you guys. I want a big hand for Paul and Glenda. They were really disappointed they couldn't be here tonight. You know, it's true. Lightning kills more Americans every year than tornadoes. Kill more every year than hurricanes, as a matter of fact. But did you know that flash flooding is our most underrated killer? wrapped around the tree for hours, just waiting for help. It wasn't but a few minutes, the whole front of his house tore off. The biggest realization that happened for me was that the water was such an awesome power, that that water could swell up against the side of the truck and totally carry us away. You can't imagine that, um, that water can have that kind of awesome power. A word of warning, never ever drive into flowing floodwaters. If you're caught in your car by rising floodwaters, get out of that car and move to higher ground immediately. This man paid with his life. Did you know that a mere two feet of water would float most cars away like a boat? Think about it. How many have jumped in your car or truck and driven off into high water? Don't do it. It's just far too dangerous. You know the most likely victim of flash flooding? Think about it, Osmogi. Someone that lives in a rural area driving across a low water crossing at night. Do you know anybody like that? I know, you know the area well. You cross that low water crossing a zillion times. You look out there and you say, Jim, there's only six inches of water flowing across that low water crossing. But what you may not know is that moments before, a wall of water washed out a section of the bridge. And now instead of driving off into that six inches of water, you drive off into the raging floodwaters of the river and drown. Your life and that of your loved ones is far more valuable than a missed trip to a friend's house or to a grocery store. We want you, at times of flash flooding, to stop and wait and let the floodwaters go down. Turn around and go back. How about going another route? But don't ever drive into flowing floodwaters. It is far, far too great a risk. Flash flooding, lightning, tornadoes, Oklahoma has seen it all. Scott Thompson, our Oklahoma traveler, now introduces us to a few of our neighbors who have indeed suffered through the evil wind. Each and every springtime evil returns to Oklahoma, carried here on cyclone winds, described as sounding like a train 
like something akin to the end of the world. And my husband heard a roar. But no train could be this hateful, no train ride this frightful. And if you happen to cross its path, all you can do is hold on and hope to survive the scariest seconds of your life. It was, it was crazy. We were right underneath it, over it. We were sitting outside and we heard the warnings go off and all of a sudden we just heard this big roar and coming through. And we ran inside. <laughs> The work of a lifetime is smashed and twisted all around you. Cars tossed like toys, family mementos crushed and mangled. Evil doesn't care about such things. One minute it is here and one the next minute is gone. Don't gamble with tornadoes. Mother Nature deals the hand. To challenge the evil of Oklahoma Spring is to challenge death itself. I went back in for $20 in cigarettes and almost didn't make it, but everything's destroyed and we had no insurance. All the roof's gone and uh, they're flooded are wet, windows broken, but everybody's okay. Everybody's okay, the sweetest words to ever roll off the tongue, especially after the mayhem of an Oklahoma spring nightmare. Well, just a white swirling cloud, and uh, just as it came down, and we immediately stopped the truck and, and uh, got out and went to the ditch. He survived, and so can you, but get out of your car. They become death traps, sardine tins. Get in a ditch, just get out. And mobile homes have someplace else to go. Mobile homes cannot stand up to such terror. It was like an earthquake. Like the house was tipping over. From the air, from a tornado's point of view, it becomes clear how to escape. Stay on the lowest part of a permanent structure, away from exterior walls. An interior closet or bathroom is a good place. And watch for the Channel 6 Pathfinder, a second-by-second -second travel log of the terror which could be heading your way, a technical marvel designed to save your life. Jim Jobs was the only one on that was telling that there was a tornado. We ran outside, saw the tornado, and made a run for it. If we hadn't, we'd still be in our trailer when it turned over. I, I guess it could have been worse, but there's a lot of things you just kind of had to give up. Though your life doesn't have to be one of them, if catastrophe cuts a swath your way, you can survive. Because blue skies always follow the storm, sunshine always lights the recovery, and life always goes on. Fortunately, it was like most people in the neighborhood made out okay. There were no casualties, so. There's a word for that, for having bested a tornado, for having survived. It's really a miracle. Miracles really do happen every Oklahoma springtime when evil drops in on cyclone winds. I've seen the biggest tornado I've ever seen in my life, but it was, it was outrageous. Back to back. How you doing? I told him I was going out to my mom's and I was going to take the baby and he said he just wanted to stay here and watch it on television. Oh, oh, okay. Lord, Lord. Oh, oh. They were here. They've been wiped completely out. <laughs> Everything's just torn up and gone, I guess. Right behind that door. Right there, right behind that closet. The thing that hurts the most are the small momentum. think about the house last night. My kids and my wife, the only thing I th we thought about. I just thank God there's not a scratch on us. Not one scratch. Remember, folks, if nothing else, remember that you can survive the storm if you're prepared. 
Now, we're not through yet. I still have some video of some things that we did around the great city of Okmulgee today, so stay in place. At this time, let's welcome back our friends from KOTV, Clayton Vaughn, Beth Ringel, and John Walls. Neighbors, they are the best. They'll be here to stay, sign autographs for you in a moment or two. Thank you all for being here tonight. Stay safe. Keep watching. I'll be there for you in the middle of the night. Good night, Okmulgee. It's so much more than right The spirit of Oklahoma Has been a way of life